Hi, Jesse Nebulous here. Welcome to episode 9 of Ask a Cripple Chick. First off, please excuse any weird lighting, like the shadows behind me on the wall, or any odd sounds. I have recently moved and I'm still getting my setup put together the way I want it, and currently it's not the way I want it. <laughs> but you work with what you got, right? So, moving right along. Question number one. I was surprised to find out that you're a smoker. Have you considered quitting? Not really. The thing is, I have progressive autoimmune disease, which means my body has already declared war on me and is actively trying to destroy itself. What's the point? <laughs> and I'm the kind of person, if you commit me, I commit you. Two can play at this game, motherfucker! Also, I'm a writer, which means I'm a sucker for a true tragic character. And that's someone who meets their own downfall due to their fatal flaw. So, if I'm taken out by a combination of shitty genetics and just shitty luck, that's just kind of sad. However, if I develop cancer-related disease that kills me 10 to 15 years before the autoimmune disease would have, then I'm kind of an asshole. And I like that better. But in all honesty, quitting smoking for your health really only makes sense if it will improve your health or extend your life or the quality of your life. And with me, that's really not going to happen. And I honestly get a lot of pleasure out of smoking. I like having my nights, my time outside. I go out and have my cigarette, listen to music, uh, just unwind. You know, I don't spend much time outside because I can't be out in the sun for very long. So just the few minutes that it takes to smoke a cigarette is about all I can spend outside. So it just, it's something that I get a lot of joy out of. That's why I'm not interested in quitting. Basically, this plane's already going down, so smoke them if you got them, man. Question number two. What do you think about a writer creating a fictional character with a condition like dystonia if they don't have that condition themselves? Love it. Assuming the writer does the necessary research to really understand what the condition entails. Otherwise, they're an asshole. <laughs> I think the biggest assholes would have to be the Farley brothers for the movie Me, Myself, and Irene. The one where Jim Carrey has multiple personalities. Now, you can tell the douche nozzles didn't even do a Wikipedia search because throughout the film, they refer to this condition as schizophrenia. And if they had done even the lightest amount of Googling possible, they would have found out that the actual condition is called dissociative identity disorder. Schizophrenia is a completely different condition. Now, I can look past the complete lack of accuracy otherwise because it's a Jim Carrey movie and I'm not looking for medical accuracy in a Jim Carrey movie any more than I would go to Liar Liar for an accurate depiction of our legal system. However, they didn't even get the name of the condition correct and it's the entire premise of the whole fucking movie, which makes them assholes. And considering the amount of misinformation and the social stigma that still surrounds mental illness, this oversight is actually more morally irresponsible. The Farley brothers should be put in stocks in the middle of Times Square and have someone read the diagnostic criteria for both schizophrenia and dissociative identity disorder out loud to them for 24 hours while passerby get to throw shit at them. Until that happens, there is no true justice in this world. But a character with dystonia? Fuck yeah, I like that idea. It sounds good. Just make sure you don't fuck it up because I'm really trying to bring back stocks, man. Yeah, because clearly jail isn't deterring anyone, so let's bring back public shaming. Let's give that a shot. And even if it doesn't work, it'll be entertaining for the rest of us. Question number three. What was it like to get that kind of diagnosis? I have a dual diagnosis, which means I was diagnosed separately for the neurological motor disorder and for the autoimmune disease. And when I got the diagnoses, those were two of the best days of my life. And I mean that with complete sincerity and zero sarcasm. Which, if you've never been in a situation like that before, or haven't known anyone in that type of situation, that could probably sound pretty morbid and just generally fucked up. But the thing is, I think when people envision a diagnostic situation, they usually picture someone coming in for some routine tests and then getting a call from the doctor later to come back in and having a consult where they're given this life-changing information that completely blindsided them that they never expected in a million years. And with something like cancer, I imagine that probably would be the situation. It's completely different with chronic illness 
uh, particularly with something like autoimmune disease, because that's something that can take years and years to start showing up in blood tests of any kind. I actually knew that there was something very wrong with me medically from about the age of eight, because that's when I started noticing that being out in the sun made me sick. Now these days I actually have skin reactions. I have I break out in sores and rashes if I'm in the sun for too long. Uh, back then there was no skin reaction. It was just it made me feel sick. And prior to the diagnosis, I'd known for about 15 years that the problem was my immune system. So the doctor wasn't telling me anything that was news to me. I already knew it. Um, the, with me, the problem never was finding out what was wrong. It was finding a doctor who would agree that that was what was wrong with me. <laughs> the dystonia, the neurological movement disorder, came as a little bit more of a surprise. Uh, just because I didn't know about the condition before that. But at the same time, it wasn't a huge surprise because the immune system, when it dysfunctions, it can affect any part of the system that it wants, any organ. So why not the brain? I mean, it's just as likely as anywhere else, right? So that was my overall reaction to the um, diagnoses. However, my immediate knee-jerk reaction was an almost overwhelming urge to go home and pull out the manila envelope with my medical records and go through them and get the name of every doctor I'd seen in the last 20 years and call them up one at a time and say, hi, you probably don't remember me, but you treated me X amount of years ago and dismissed me as a hypochondriac. I'm 30 years old now and I am disabled by a combination of autoimmune disease and a neurological movement disorder. And if you're still in practice, I think you should probably reevaluate your system for differentiating valid complaints from invalid ones, because at least in my case, you majorly dropped the ball. I also want you to know that my current doctor offered me Percocet, which I declined. And I chose to take myself off of the Vicodin in favor of non-narcotic pain management methods. So if the reason you dismissed me was that based on my age and my appearance, you assumed I must be a drug seeker, then fuck you. In all honesty, being severely sick isn't nearly as difficult as being moderately sick and having nobody believe you. So compared, you know, my current situation compared to like the last 20 years of being sick, this shit's a cakewalk, man. <laughs> or in my case, a, a cake hobble. <laughs> so thanks for playing along. If you have questions you would like to ask the cripple chick, go right ahead. You can leave a comment, you can go bug me on Twitter or Facebook. That's what all that shit's for. Go ahead and use it. Alright, you guys take care and I'll see you next time. Love. Okay. Alright, moving ladder. I can't even speak. I can't speak. Fuck balls, man. Alright. Hi, Jesse Nebulous here, and wel welcome. I can't talk. I can't speak. What am I gonna do with my life if I can't speak? I already can't fucking walk. That's not fair. Then they're an asshole. Cats, knock it off. I swear, they sleep constantly, and then as soon as I turn on the camera or try to do anything, they just lose their little cat minds. Poofy, get your fat ass out in front of the camera. Damn. Eyeliner, you are hard enough to apply. How dare you smudge? Cat, I will punch your face off of your head. No, I won't. <laughs> but I want to. What are you doing? They're insane. <sighs> Maybe I'm the insane one. I'm the one who's talking to them, right? <laughs>